If you are from BC or Ontario and you're thinking about moving to Lethbridge, there are some things that you need to know that's gonna make this big move way smoother. Hey guys, my name's Curtis and I'm a realtor located right here in Lethbridge, Alberta. Now, usually on this channel, I post weekly home tour videos and I've toured homes listed as as little as $260,000 all the way up to $1.4 million. So I'll leave a link right up here and down in the description below to link to that playlist. And if you're undecided about moving to Lethbridge and you wanna know more, I have a pros and cons video that I'll also link up here and down in the description so you can watch that after this one. I also have a cost of living in Lethbridge too, if that's important to you. Now, over the past spring months, I've helped a ton of families move from BC or Ontario to Lethbridge. Some people have been super savvy and have cashed out on their massively overpriced housing and decided to buy in cash and be mortgage free. Some have even just made the lateral move and still mortgage their house, but have been super surprised how crazy inexpensive the cost of living is here. And some have been able to even buy a house here cash and invest in a few revenue properties to afford themselves the ability to retire as millionaires, which is pretty amazing. However, all of these families have had similar questions that keep coming up from time to time, which I'm gonna answer right now. So let's get started. So square footage. So when you're looking at listings in Lethbridge or just anywhere else in Alberta for that matter, Keep in mind that we do not count square footage below grade, meaning that any basement, including walkouts, are not included in the square footage of a property. Now this is important because when you're browsing those listings, you might see a home that's listed for 1300 square feet, for example, but if you include the basement in there, there's a good chance that it's closer to 2000 square feet, depending on the layout of the home, which is what you guys see in Ontario when you're browsing your listings. By the way, if you wanna start browsing properties for sale right now, there's also a link down in the description below that you can enter your price range and all your requirements, and I'll personally set you up on an email list that will send you the properties within your criteria as soon as they're listed so you don't miss out on your dream house. The link is located right down there. Also, if you're watching this video from your phone, there's also a link to my app down there that you can use to browse listings as well. The neighborhoods. So Lethbridge is broken up into three main areas, north, south, and west. There is no east, just quite yet. So the west side is separated by the coolies from the other side of town, and the north and south is broken up by Highway 3. So the question that I get asked all the time is which area of town is best? And that is such a hard question for me to answer because like everything, each side of town, of course, has its own pros and cons. What I'm actually working on now is neighborhood tours of every single neighborhood in Lethbridge. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss those. But in the interest of not making this video too long, the west side is one of the newer sides of the city. The University of Lethbridge is located over there as well but it's safe to say that most people live west and work on the north or south side and commute every single day across the bridge. And I'll get to those commute times later in this video. Then there's the south side of Lethbridge, which is generally more sought after in Lethbridge because it's more conveniently located to all of those Lethbridge amenities. That being said, it also has the most expensive lots and real estate. And finally, there's the north side, which for some reason has the stigma of being the north side of Lethbridge. But if you look at areas like Legacy, the Uplands, or even Black Wolf, they are just as nice, if not nicer, than the new developments on the west side. And is home to some amazing parks, like Legacy Park, that has brand new tennis, pickleball courts, basketball courts, skate parks, spray parks, and the list just goes on. So I guess if every side of Lethbridge is good, where are the bad parts in Lethbridge? Well, honestly, I think Lethbridge is pretty safe. The amount of violent crime here is very low, but if you live closer to downtown, that is where you run the risk of thieves in your backyard stealing your bikes or breaking into your backyard and stuff like that. But like any city, if you wanna live downtown, you're probably gonna have to put up with that sort of petty crime. So drive times and commuting. So Lethbridge just passed 100,000 people in population, which to me makes it feel like a small city, but a big town. I feel like there's a strong sense of community here. And whenever I'm out at a hockey game or event, I'm always gonna bump into someone that I know. Now, because this is just a basically a big city, the commute times are basically nothing. 
especially if you're from BC or Ontario, where I know some people have to drive up to two hours just one way to work, which is absolutely nuts. Here, if I just type into Google Maps, the YMCA, which is located on the west side, all the way to Costco on the south side of town, on the opposite side of town, it's only a 15 minute drive. So when you're looking for somewhere with a short commute or close to work, what I always tell people from out of town is just to find the house you love and the commute is gonna feel like nothing for you. Next is utilities. So I don't know what kind of utilities there are in Ontario, but I do know that in BC, your electricity comes from BC Hydro and it's all run by the province. Whereas in Alberta, utilities are more privatized, which means that there's more options and more competition between companies. So that helps keeps our prices lower. So when you're pricing out utilities in Alberta, your water, garbage, and recycling all come from the city, which is normal, but the electricity and gas can come from NMAX, direct energy, or just energy. And you can choose to get electricity from one and gas from the other, or you can choose to bundle them all together from one company if you so choose. So sales tax. Now, if you're like me or like everyone else I've ever talked to on the entire planet, I assume you do not like paying taxes. Well, the good news here is that in Alberta, we only have a consumer tax, which is called GST at 5%. No HST or PST or any other ST. Not something that you need to know, but it's actually pretty awesome. Um, but if you plan on buying a brand new house here, like a brand new build, which I can also help you out with as well, GST is applicable on new houses and not on resale houses. But for most homes in Lethbridge, that GST is already included in the sale price. Now the weather. So yes, Lethbridge has been dubbed the Windy City, but it's also one of the sunniest places on Canada with an average of 333 days of sunshine per year. Now, more about that wind. So in general, the wind is usually worse in the spring and the fall when the wind is either blowing in that cold air or blowing in that warm air. However, what that wind does in the winter is bring in what's called Chinook winds that really warms us up during those winter months. And because Lethbridge is located so far south, we have some of the most mild winters in all of Alberta. Now, things to do. Okay, so this is usually a question I get after a couple months from families that have already moved here. So I made a whole video about this on my channel, so be sure to subscribe. However, the question is, what is there to do around Lethbridge? So apart from things to do in the city, some of my favorite day trips are riding on stone where you can see hieroglyphs carved into some pretty amazing hoodoos. Uh, we have Dinosaur National Park, which is just to the northeast of us, um, where you can see some of the highest concentration of dinosaurs in the entire world. We have Waterton close by. That's just like a smaller, less busy version of Banff. And of course, we have the Crow's Nest Pass, which is another mountain destination full of beautiful views, hiking and day trips. Of course, there's a ton of lakes for boating and so many places to camp all around Lethbridge for those of you who like the outdoors as well. Again, if you want to learn about more, be sure to check out my five best day trips from Lethbridge video. Snakes. Okay, so this is a question that I don't get often, but when I do, people are just freaked out. And that is, is there snakes in Lethbridge? Do I have to be worried about snakes in Lethbridge? Oh my God, those rattlesnakes, are they gonna get me? Well, the answer is no. I mean, yes, there are rattlesnakes in Lethbridge, but are they gonna get you? Mm, no. It's likely that you probably aren't ever gonna see one. Uh, we, they actually had this on the radio the other day. It was a question and they said, who has seen a rattlesnake in Lethbridge? And the majority of people have never seen one. There are areas of the coolies where you are more likely to see rattlesnakes, but for the most part, the answer is still no. So if you'd ever see a rattlesnake in town, which again is extremely rare, but if you do see one, you can just literally call the rattlesnake guy. He comes, picks it up and relocates it for you. Again, I've lived here like my whole life and I've only ever seen one rattlesnake, which was down in Pops and Park and we just get, didn't get anywhere near it and it was fine. It just went away. So don't be afraid of snakes. So there it is, guys. These are just some of the most frequently asked questions that I get from people moving out of town from places like BC or Ontario and moving to Lethbridge. So if you guys have any other questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. And if you want to keep up with these videos or just learn about more about Lethbridge, or if you just want to tune in to my weekly home tours, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you guys in the next one. 
Oh, and if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. It truly helps me out. And comment down below where you're watching from, because I also want to know, because that's cool as well. Oh, and if you're planning on moving to Lethbridge, be sure to call, text, or email me, and we'll start setting you up with some listings and more information. Uh, I gotta go. This video's getting too long. We'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye. <laughs>